These days, chess bots are all the rage. From Mittens to Martin, they range in levels of strength. But you know about the original chess bot? The first chess playing bot of all time was known as the Mechanical Turk, and it was an automaton capable of playing chess against any opponent, or so it seemed. In this video, I'll be covering the, the automaton's game versus Napoleon Bonaparte, one of the greatest military generals of all time. So see, Napoleon has the white pieces, which is a little bit unusual. Normally, the white pieces will be placed on the Turk's side, but here we see Napoleon just opens with e4, very standard, we see e5, and Napoleon now takes a step up the beaten path and goes queen to f3. Now you probably don't see this move too much unless you're in the range of about 600 to 800 on chess.com where players are frequently going for the scholar's mate. So of course, the Turk being a good player decides to go knight to c6, just defending that pawn e5 should it get attacked. Then we see bishop c4 threatening that 4 move checkmate attack. Of course, the Turk being a good player blocks that knight to f6. Then we see knight to e2 by Napoleon, of course. The knight can't go to its most optimal square on f3 because the queen is in the way. Bishop c5. So develop another piece, then we see a3. A little bit of a waste of time with the concrete plan. Napoleon here just wants to go b4, maybe bishop c2, get that bishop on the long diagonal, covering a lot of key squares. The Turk, very principled again, just goes d6. Now the light square bishop is ready to come into the game, and he's wasting no time, every move, using it to its fullest capacity to get a piece out or develop something even more. We see castles by Napoleon, and then bishop c4. This hits the queen, so the piece is coming out with tempo, which is always a good move. So Napoleon just slides that over to d3, a little bit of an odd choice because it's now sitting on the d-pawn, so it's going to be a little bit harder to get this dark square bishop into the game, but nevertheless, not a losing move. We then see knight to h5, a move with a very interesting plan. So basically, black is just planning to capture on e2, and after the queen recaptures, stick his knight on f4, which is a great square for the knight, and comes with tempo on the queen. This is why you don't want to bring your queen out too early, because all these sort of moves can come when they develop with tempo, you can end up in big trouble quite quickly, which is what we actually see. So Napoleon just goes h3 here, again, wasting a bit of tempo. We see he's got this sort of bunny ears structure, which uses a bit of a waste of time. And here especially, because that bishop wanted to capture an e2 anyway, and now you're just forcing the automaton to do what he wanted to do anyway, per se. So we see bishop takes e2, queen takes e2, and a knight to f4, the idea of the plan. Now move like queen g5 would be very natural, of course, queen g4 to block, but obviously the attack is starting to develop. We see queen e1 by Napoleon, just dropping that queen back, of course it's attacked, and then the queen... It's a bit, a bit of a weird arrangement, all these pieces on the back rank. The only piece not on the back rank is this bishop, so his development is a little bit suspicious so far. We see knight to d4, and black's position just looks absolutely crushing. I mean, look at these both these knights eyeing up so much real estate in the white position, and you know when attacks better crash you any, any minute now. We see bishop to b3. Don't know why Napoleon's moving that bishop again. This bishop could even be taken. Turk has no interest in grabbing the bishop pair. He's diving straight in, but knight takes h3 check, and he can't even take this knight back. If you take with the pawn, the pawn is no longer controlling that key g3 square, and a move like knight to f3 will just win the game with check. Hits the king, hits the queen. You might want to just resign there. So, of course, Napoleon actually managed to see this and just slid his king up to h2. But as I've analyzed, analyzed here, a simple plan that h5, h4, of course, move the knight. If you get that rook in the game, this king is absolutely going to be, his goose is going to be cooked. We see queen to h4 threatening a discovery check here. And Napoleon can't really avoid it. He decides to go g3 just to hit that queen, get a bit of tempo on it. But after here the king just slides over to g2, but unfortunately it loses the queen with check. Knight takes e1 check, rook takes knight, and then we see queen to g4 with lots of pressure on this very weak pawn on f2. So d3, Napoleon is trying to get his bishop out, but it's just too late. Bishop takes f2, hits the rook, rook now has to move. We see rook to h1 with a bit of pressure on this knight, but queen takes g3 check. And all these minor pieces are just combining, combining absolutely beautifully. But I think this is about checkmate and eight, which the engine was seeing, but the game went on a little bit longer. The king moved out of the way, threatening checkmate. Check, picks up the rook, comes back, check the king again, king to e1, knight g1. Now threatening this mate on e2. So of course, Napoleon actually defends it, that knight now covers the square, but bishop takes c3 check. After pawn takes, the defender of that square is removed, and queen to e2 is in fact checkmate. And it's worth mentioning now that this, this uh, automaton was not an automaton at all. It was actually a human chess player inside the machine that would read the board from above, set up a board inside the machine, because it was basically the mechanical Turk played in this big desk. He would be sitting inside the desk and then relay the moves to the machine and would control it with levers from the inside. So sort of almost a magic trick type setup where they would open up the doors beneath it, show that it was empty in fact, and then close it up. Uh, just as like a desk for this... Uh, device to sit on but in fact there was room for a secret chess player hidden inside. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Not quite the story of uh, chess automaton beating Napoleon but a very interest interesting story in game nonetheless. So if you guys enjoyed that it's probably worth subscribing to my channel. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. I really appreciate it. 
and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next one.